Hey, Storytime grown-ups. How's preschool at home going? Doing okay? I hope you are. All right, well, this week, in honor of Valentine's Day coming up, we are talking all about love in the story time. Um, and so some of the ideas I had to follow up at home are mostly involving hearts. <laughs> yeah. All right, the first one is that you can make Valentines um, for people in your life and especially if you can get your little valentine making machine cranking them out, um, you could send them to people who may not be receiving many cards and letters right now and might not be getting much attention. So especially if you if you know somebody who is in an extended care facility, um, that might be a really nice chance for you to get to send some love their way. Um, when we do valentines that are here, um, when you're here in the library, we will just put out a whole bunch of paper and glue and scissors and markers and crayons. Um, and if I have some fun shapes of foam, we'll put those out. Uh, sometimes I go even a little sillier and we'll get um, some decorations from the Dollar Tree that are for Valentine's Day. And we'll add those to them too. So at home, don't be afraid to just get out a bunch of stuff and let them just make some cards. Uh, we usually do spend a little bit of time talking about how to make a heart, which is a trickier concept than you would think. Um, we talk about folding over the paper, drawing what starts like the beginning of a two is usually how I describe it. So we'll draw this part right on the paper seam and then work on cutting it out. If your little one is not at that age, you can just cut a bunch of hearts out for them. Um, but whenever we're working on those skills and breaking things down like that, it really does help our um, ability to follow directions later. So that's a good thing to work on. All right, so you can make Valentine's Day cards and send them to people you know and people you don't know and just maybe deliver them to neighbors when they're not home or something like that. All right, that's the first idea. Uh, the second idea I have is that you can do a heart hunt. You can um, cut out some hearts yourself and hang them around your house or you can cut out some smaller ones and bury them in rice um, or whatever texture they like to play in in a sensory bin. So you can do it as a, a large scope thing where they're looking all around for them or you can do it on a smaller scale where they're digging through a bin. Um, totally up to you and how much work you want to put in. The next idea I had is just to get out some Play-Doh and if you have any sort of rolling pen that they can use with the Play-Doh that always really extends the amount of time that they'll play with it. Um, and then I would get out some heart-shaped cookie cutters if you have any. If you don't, you can always get out scissors if you have Play-Doh scissors or um, the Play-Doh knives that come with them sometimes and you can practice cutting it that way. Um, but I do really love my heart-shaped cookie cutters especially. I get a lot of use out of not usually for cookies, usually for a bunch of other things. Um, so using those with the Play-Doh hearts are super fun. And the next idea I have is that um, making a, a post office. So a lot of times kids don't necessarily know how mail gets to their mailbox or to their PO box. Um, so talking about how the mail works before you send the Valentines that maybe you send, um, you could talk about how the post office works and what that is. And then I love making that into a sorting game. So sometimes here we have a giant box that we have holes cut into and the kids try to sort letters by the shape that's on the front and then they'll put it through the slots or they get to be inside and be the postal carrier or the post office worker. Um, and they will sort the items. And I even have, I have little houses that we just made out of paper bags with the different shapes on them so they can deliver the letters that way. So get creative, but you can definitely do some sort of post office game where they're playing post office. Um, and just use what you have around you to make it as easy as possible. Maybe if you have stuffed animals you can set up, they can deliver animals to the stuffed animals, or <laughs> deliver animals. They can deliver letters to the stuffed animals. Like you can give them an item and say, can you give this to the stuffed animal that has brown eyes or something like that and do it as a clue game. Um, that'll involve a little bit more hands-on, but it is a lot of fun to play post office, believe it or not. Uh, the next idea I had is that you can do a heart candy game. So 
if you buy the heart candies that have the little sayings on them and stuff, first of all, you can try to recognize the letters that are on there. I wouldn't necessarily read them all with the littler ones because they may not be the most appropriate things to read. Um, but you can practice letter recognition, which is great. Uh, you can also use tweezers to try picking them up and sorting them by color or by what letters they see. Um, or you can make, if you have any 10 frames or counting sheets where you're practicing your counting, you can do them like that. So you can do, you know, a 10 frame, how many, how much time does it take to fill it in? You can do, if I have three yellow hearts and five pink hearts, how many hearts do I have all together? Um, so you can do that. If you do not do heart candy, you can also do that activity with pom poms. Anytime you add tweezers, what are we working on? I know, those fine motor skills. I'm so obsessive. All right. The last idea I had is a game where you would roll a dice if you have any at your house. Um, you would roll a die and then count how many are on it. And then if you have um, cookie cutters, they work really well for this game. But you can also do it with just a heart-shaped piece of paper. I'm showing you a heart, but I'm not showing you in a way that you can see it. So that doesn't help you at all, does it? Nope. All right. So you can put down the cookie cutter or the sheet that has a heart shape on it and then roll a die and see how many pom-poms it takes to fill in that heart. So you can use, if you have multiple sizes, it works even better. You can see how long it takes to fill it in. You can have your kids guess how many pom-poms it'll take to fill it in. You could put in a couple different shape, sizes of pom-poms and make it extra tricky that way. Um, but it it's a game where you could go back and forth and you each try to fill up your pom-poms or your hearts with pom-poms. You could do it that way too. So that's a bunch of ideas. I hope it gives you some that you can use at home. Sorry, I didn't have any visual aids today. I think that that does help me when I'm at home. So I hope that you were able to follow my rambling ideas and that they still give you some like it, good ideas to use at your house. And I really hope that preschool at home is going pretty well, that you've had lots of fun ideas. If you complete some of these and want to show me your work, I would love to see it. If you need some new ideas, feel free to send a message and we will try to get you some new ideas that fit the skills that you're trying to build a little bit better. I hope this helps a little bit. I will talk to you soon. Bye.